from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data SV 2016. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for day two of coverage of Strata Hadoop Big Data SV, which is our event in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. We're right across the street at the Fairmont Hotel. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. where We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE Media and Wikibon. Our next guest is Praveen Kanakari, CEO, Impetus Technologies, and Vineet Tayagi, CTO. Welcome to the Cube. Welcome back to the Cube, and welcome to the Cube first time. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. So we, we had a chat last time uh, here on theCUBE about the challenges of Hadoop. And this is something that has, has come up. It's, it's, it's every show, it's like, there's got to go, got to go faster, it's got to be hardened. And one of the things that you guys are doing, I'd like to get your perspective on it is, is everyone sees the value of Hadoop. And certainly some things have changed. MapReduce kind of gets sunsetted, and now Spark's in the front, front and center. But they want, they, they understand the use case. They understand the big picture. You store a bunch of stuff in batch, and then you got to get some insights out of it. That sounds really easy, uh, or not. So it depends. <laughs> Share with us uh, the thoughts on, on where you're at. And we talked about it before, I want to rehash to it, but share with the folks out there what you guys do, because you guys are in the middle of all the action. What's the update? So, so at a 100,000 foot level, John, uh, one is, uh, you know, Hadoop became, uh, came out as a very promising option for processing your unstructured data. And saw that enterprises are fully there in processing all their unstructured data. That's also a journey that they've begun on. And, and some are a little far ahead and some are behind. Some have outsourced a problem to you know, your social media analytics companies and whatnot. So that's one area. And then the second area is uh, in, you know, a lot of companies uh, started looking at Hadoop as an, as an option for processing their structured data as well. You know, data warehouse or, or what have you. And, and there also there's, there are a lot of gaps. Uh, the gaps are narrowing. You know, conference to conference when I get to see you. But uh, still, the gaps are... Uh, it's hard. I mean, it's heavy lifting involved. There's a different skill set. There's some talent issues. But you know, there's also some transitions. We had a great chat earlier today around some of the transitional things going on around Hadoop. Certainly, the ecosystem's going beyond Hadoop. The use cases are significantly, sometimes vertically specialized, prepackaged apps or whatnot. The data layer, the new glue, the new middleware is there. So that, you know, all these things are around where the data is stored. There's a lot of things changing in that area, how it's processed, things are changing, you know, all flash, and then ultimately the management. It could be a nightmare for a customer to think about doing that. So given that, what have you guys found as a best practice to tackle getting Hadoop and equivalent systems out there to provide that kind of value? So, so you know, largely I think uh, what we have been doing for our customers is looking at what are these gaps. So Hadoop is a, it's a very strong contender, we believe in it. But there are gaps, and how do we bridge those gaps for them? How rapidly can we bridge the gaps? Uh, so we've just Which gaps are you seeing, for instance? Uh, for example, you know, talk of uh, structured data. So even to use Hadoop as a viable modern data warehouse, uh, there are a lot of things missing. And uh, so we have actually, con you know, we've spent a lot of time and effort to examine what can we do in a hurry to accelerate this migration, because. Uh, enterprises are clamoring, and you know, I'm sure countless guests before me have said this, that the cost of uh, your legacy data warehouses is becoming unaffordable. Yeah. The word we heard was retrofit. Um, <laughs> you know, retrofit jobs, so a lot of people are retrofitting their infrastructure yes. to kind of fit this modern era. Or, and the other word we heard was failure <laughs> pretty frequently. Yeah. So the people are, you know, need... No, some are going to fail along the way. Yeah. There's, there, there's going to be a lot of gaps in what uh, we've been seeing working with our customers, as Praveen was saying earlier, is that the gaps are in several areas. One is that the distributions are there and they're doing a good job, you know, of bringing up Hadoop and making it viable. But it only comes as far. Yeah, yeah. And we've been watching at the show, right? Every year the show gets bigger. You know, 200 companies became 400 companies. And that's one of the biggest challenges that everybody has, the customers that we are working with, in order to build a viable solution and fill the gaps, they have to look at the hard part of assessing what's the right solution. And then they have to choose and work with a you know, chosen solution. They have to bring it in. And what's also happening is that for 
each of these companies brings a certain strength which solves a particular gap but leaves the other open. So you've got to then bring in some more. And then the onus is on the enterprise to manage everything and stitch everything together and make Hadoop a viable warehouse. And that's a nightmare. That's a nightmare to manage. Uh, you know, even from the perspective of these gaps getting filled up, how do you interoperate? How do you look at that? A warehouse is supposed to be a very tied together, uh, a kind of a homogeneous, you know, well orchestrated, tied with the data kind of a machine. And when you bring in multiple solutions, that's not happening. Clearly. So you guys, uh, your your uh, lineage is more as a services company and trying to create the actual uh, results that people are looking for with these technologies. So effectively, it sounds like what you're saying is that you would get contracted to generate the results. Uh, then you'd find that you'd spend an enormous amount of money with the customer in the actual infrastructure itself trying to get it to work. So you've turn that experience into a product kit that you think is just really optimized for accelerating to the results? So is that, is that right? Uh, absolutely, right on the money. So we were, we were reinventing the wheel for every customer. And, uh, and, and we, you know, we would also, we, and we still do, we give our feedback to all the distro guys. Uh, but at some point we realized that, you know, we should be a cause in the matter, take matters in our own hands. And because, you know, they're, they're coming from, they started at the storage layer, the compute layer, and they're coming out from there. And, and they're, every year they're adding more and more abstractions and, and raising the bar. And, and we started from the customer and we've started coming down. So we're... Meeting in the middle. Yeah, meeting in the middle. Yeah. So, so how does that But our customers are benefiting from this. Now, you know, there may be some overlaps between what we do and, and what they're going to do. We'll so, see how that plays out, but... So how does that translate into time to deliver? So with the old way, you <coughs> it took how long? And using your own tool set with your own people and the experience associated with it, it's happening how much faster? So going back three, four years ago, we were, at, we were customers were coming to us and asking us, you know, I've got 50,000 queries to be migrated to Hive. And, and we would go and ask our engineers, and, and it was a boring exercise even for the engineers working on it. I mean, you know, 5% of the queries were challenging to migrate and required real engineering skills. The rest were just, it was, it was a monotonous exercise. But the cost was too high. I mean, these projects were taking nine months, 10 months. Uh, and even, even after we had done the migration, there were a lot of challenges. You know, the governance models exactly did not map, uh, you know, so it was just a nightmare. All their, the BI, existing BI infrastructure could not really leverage all of this seamlessly. Uh, so fast forward, actually, we, you know, we went back and, and over the last two years, we worked on a tool to migrate all of these workloads automatically. So now we're going into these accounts and we're doing 80% of the migration in days and weeks powered by our tool. And the 20%, which is problematic, but our tool flags the areas, which require manual smart attention, and we go in and do take care of that, and so we can finish. You it. automate a lot of the heavy lifting. So, so we've just automated, and and our automation is only increasing on a weekly basis. So, is that the announcement you guys had? I saw us in the news there. You guys have an announcement. Was that the t the? Uh, yes. Vinny, can you share the the announcement? Yeah. So the announcement that we made, uh, as Praveen said earlier, is that we are announcing the data warehouse uh, modernization practice, which is powered by our tool set. And uh, the tool set is proven, built on best practices, our methodology, years of our learning that we've had with Hadoop. And what it is doing for customers is that it's delivering them immediate ROI. One of the biggest area where customers are struggling is they're going on a dime and they're going on faith to invest in Hadoop and they Looking for ROI. The that, <laughs> they get stuck in the mud. The yeah, wheels they, aren't turning. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. So and they're spinning their wheels. They're trying yeah. to find the right use case. And business is coming and saying, "We invested twenty million dollars in getting all the data in Hadoop." You know. You've seen customers with a twenty million dollar investment in Hadoop. Oh yes, we've seen yeah. some of the. You know, where overall the program has been over a couple of years, the investment has been upwards. This is not just this is hardware, software, yeah, and yeah, services the whole total all cost together, ownership. all all put together. And that's a tremendous amount of money, which is 
going to be realized over a few years, right? You so the, this practice, this is the migration you're talking about, the yes. tools. So this yes. is part of the practice. So you come in and say, yeah. hey, you know, the other guys offer nine months, we do nine weeks or whatever the number is, right? Absolutely. That's that the kind of order of magnitude, nine months, nine weeks? Can you? Absolutely. Uh, nine, it, it can be nine months or more. On, an, on yeah. the nine weeks. Yeah. Nine, nine months or more. Uh, it's the competition. It's the competition. If you, if you go the traditional way and just do the whole thing manually. And, and if you can hire 50 smart programmers. <laughs> and you guys are in a lot of markets. You mentioned healthcare and whatnot. So these are verticals, right? So you yes. go in, you can work from the top of the stack down, which you mentioned that. I like that. And there might be some gaps, but you taking the customer approach. You look at the customer. Are these prepackaged apps or prepackaged dashboards, single view into the, <coughs> into the data? Is that what they're looking for? What are, what are these customers looking for I mean, in these verticals? I mean, obviously different verticals have different requirements. So I'm sure that's where you guys add value as you come in and, and customize, if you will. So in the Fortune 100, we are not going with templatized applications, so to speak. We are actually taking these tools and platforms so that we can accelerate building of their applications. Because uh, what we are finding is their applications are, uh, you know, their, their context is very unique mm -hmm. from customer to customer. And, and it has to be really tuned to work in their setting. I mean, and what's been the impact that you've seen with your customers that you've gone in and done this You know, with? one of our best customers, I think we have done over 100 use cases. And what kind and, of and impact got, of their we've, business? We've got nearly 200 people working on, you know, and, and the impact is massive. I mean, we just did one. Uh, we, we moved uh, their fraud management system, which is a massive rules-based system, to a machine learning-based system uh, running on uh, Hadoop. And in six months, they came back and they said they'd cut down $180 million worth of false positives. Wow. So, so, so one is that. Instant one, saving. One is, Fraud one is instant saving. Fruit. But then the, the second saving is, you know, you have far fewer dissatisfied customers who are not using their competitors. So. Yeah, and there's so many signals out there that they can yes. use. Yes. So you guys are modernizing, essentially, the, the, yes. using Hadoop as a way to get in since they got their attention on, I mean, who dupes an indicator if the customer's saying, if they're interested in Hadoop, they're looking for a new way. Absolutely. And then you say, hey, okay, we'll come in and clean up. Yeah. <laughs> right? You, you sleep up the floor. And, and, and just, just so we're clear, I want to make sure I'm clear about one thing. Uh, so we have a fraud detection system today, probably running on a traditional data warehouse where the infrastructure may be 5, 8, 10, 12 years old. Absolutely. And what you're doing is you're saying, hey, let's, let's bring this application. We know it's going to become more embedded in other business activities, business processes. We know you're going to want to bring fraud or more additional types of data into the fraud detection system so that you can improve its uh, reliability. But you're not going to be able to do that on this old infrastructure. Let's move it to a new infrastructure. So, it, so the first part of the value proposition is let's move it to the new infrastructure Absolutely. that's going to create <clears throat> new options for how you embed this within the rest well of your said. business. Yeah. And then the second thing is you can take 12 months or more to do this because of the enormous complexity, or you can use this toolkit to move stuff naturally, and, and you're getting significant paybacks. But, but still, how, how many clients can you handle at a time with this? Is it, does it really happen that automatically, or is it still relatively labor-intensive on, on the part of your guys? It's actually, today, at this very moment, it's 80% less labor-intensive than it was two years ago. And, and we're going to we're working hard for to you drive it or down. just the customer in general uh, for our customer and for us because you know there are not unlimited people we can hire smart people we can hire so even we have limitations and and we are trying to drive up the value we can create per employee uh, and and our customers are benefiting from it as well so it's a, it's a very happy situation so your customers get modern infrastructure uh, it you get a faster deployment and you can pursue more deals yeah and Absolutely. we can save them immediate costs, right? So and and, and they get a cheaper result. We can do it cost result. efficiently, time efficiently. Cheaper current result with new so, options in the future. So yeah. payback is way less than six months on a migration exercise, including the cost of the one-time cost of migration. Got it. Yeah, so you guys, essentially, everyone, everyone wins. Yes. Everyone wins. Well, congratulations. Great to see you again. I was very Thank impressed you, with you guys last time. Again, you're, this is a classic example of digital transformation. Absolutely. First step is just, you know, get the modern factory going of data. And you guys are doing that. So congratulations, uh, Praveen and Vineet. Thank you so much for joining on theCUBE. We'll be right back with more. We have a big party tonight. We have a big presentation. Peter is going to have an analyst. We're going to have customers. We're going to have people in the industry. And, of course, industry reception here at the Fairmont. If you're in San Jose and watching this and, and part of the Cube community, come down and join us. We're at the Fairmont Ballroom, part of Strata Hadoop. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break.